Hi, I'm Eric at Prague Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. <clears throat> I'm just going to talk about dry farming and cellular function and plant metabolism, and also look at Hachachiro and seashore mangosteen and some seedlings I planted and stuff like that. Talk about dry farming. The usual. Hopefully it'll be interesting. Um, here goes. So I'm standing in front of this Kwaimak tree. I'm also going to talk about the Kwaimak, of course, because I love the Kwaimak fruit. It's a delicious fruit. In fact, uh, it could be uh, one of my top two fruits of all time. And this tree, I could look at this tree uh, 12 days in a row and only see one fruit on it and then come by today and look and see quite a bit of fruit on it uh, that I didn't see for the previous 12 days. And I do see some larger fruit up higher up, or higher up. And I don't really see any over here. Maybe it's because I hit it with the tractor when I mowed this path. I don't know. But this tree is trying to start producing more fruit, uh, finally. We dry farm everything. We grow naturally. We don't mow the weeds. Uh, we focus on soil health. And I've been on this journey to understand plant uh, metabolism and plant health uh, for the sake of our own health for the last eight years, almost nine years now we've been here. We started this farm nine years ago to be, a, or you know, 2015 to be a Achachiro farm. Uh, I've expanded to I don't know, 200 plus different species of rare tropical fruit trees and we have mangoes. I haven't spoken about mangoes because I just don't want to throw those in people's face, especially if I'm not uh, selling them. This is a fruit punch. It's been a, I've been getting sufficient amount of mangoes uh, for ourselves. Uh, this is a peach cobbler mango. It's always been one of my favorites. Fruit punch is a good one also. Uh, Floragon really has uh, been exceptional this year. This was a pineapple pleasure. I haven't tasted the fruit on it, but I, I did harvest it. The Venus was uh, average this year. Uh, there's still a big Venus fruit in there, I see. The fruit get huge on it. Uh, but they've been just average. Uh, Sugarloaf has been just average. I got a lot of fruit off uh, one of our Sugarloaf trees. Uh, sweet tart is always excellent. But we're not selling mangoes this year. I've been giving a lot of mangoes away. I've uh, given a lot of mangoes away, in fact, probably more than I've eaten. Uh, but uh, I have been trying to eat about at least five a day. Uh, seems to be a good number for me uh, without gaining any weight, so... That's nice. I guess I should go look at that cashew tree to see if it has any fruit on it. For some reason, all the fruit got stripped off the tree by some uh, creature, uh, probably a possum. This is a seed-grown sugar apple. Sugar apple season is fastly approaching. It should be an excellent uh, sugar apple year. I do see some atamoyas on our trees also, but we don't have the, as many atamoyas as we do sugar apples. It's looking good. These uh, three lychee trees that seem to get drought stress are trying to overcome their condition. I don't know why they got drought stress. I'm fairly certain though that it's because the neighbors stopped having the flow well, their artesian well on 24 seven. So the ditch next to us dried up. And I'm positive that had something to do with uh, the severe drought conditions we had, uh, or the, the way the trees exhibited uh, stress from the drought this year was uh, more severe uh, than in years past. And you think it would get better and better with every year, but 
not all trees even showed any sign, showed a lot, most Garcinia trees and citrus trees didn't show any type of drought stress whatsoever. We did have a couple of uh, Garcinia trees that are uh, along paths that had uh, burnt leaf tips. Uh, that was drought stress, but this uh, cashew tree never showed any drought stress. And that's just, I came out here one day and all the fruit was gone, but it is flowering still. So I'm hoping that it gets some more fruit. I got a lot of fruit off of it. I got a lot of fruit off of it, enough to plant a hundred seeds here and give a lot of seeds away. So uh, I do sell seeds, but I think most of the seeds now are all spoken for. I don't hang on to seeds. Once I have them, I like to plant them or move them along uh, so that they don't become uh, old. There is some fruit on it, I guess, still. So it's not a total, I see lots of flowers on this side. and But it's very weird. I had uh, little seeds, uh, little fruit all over this tree and it all got uh, pretty much stripped off by I don't know what, probably birds or a possum, I guess. <sighs> oh well, eventually we will have so many uh, cashews producing fruit that it won't matter uh, since we have over a hundred trees of that growing now uh, from seeds off this tree. This is a Miko lemon that I see is flowering uh, right now. So <clears throat> that's good. I like the off-season flowering of the citrus. Here's a lychee that never got affected by drought. It's right next to this pepper tree. Most of our lychees, we have about 34 lychees, did not get affected by the drought though. Most of them did drop all their fruit. Didn't really matter because in years past, all of our lychee fruit has been consumed by birds. Uh, our trees are kind of small. I'm sure eventually that won't be the case, but at least they're healthy and don't have any issues with uh, arachno arachnos mites uh, that has been plaguing Florida for a while. But because we focus on the health of the soil and uh, create a living system and we dry farm, uh, those combinations and apply small amounts of holistically grown cow manure um, uh, from our miniature zebus, uh, it's, the trees are able to overcome uh, pest and disease issues. Uh, so <clears throat> most of the time, the mangoes seem to be systemically uh, prone to anthracnose, a lot of them be that they get from the nursery. So uh, it doesn't seem to hurt the tree, but it can affect the fruit. Uh, we don't spray copper. Uh, we don't spray anything uh, except for maybe biologicals we used to spray like uh, BD500 because we used to be biodynamic certified. We are no longer biodynamic certified, nor are we organic certified any longer, but uh, I do these videos and people know how I grow. So when I say clean, holistically grown cow manure, um, this is a J31 mango that was trying to put out fruit in the winter. Because we dry farm, our uh, trees flower at different times than other people's trees. So the jackfruit, uh, when typically will be flowering in spring and early summer, here doesn't flower because it's just coming off of a drought. So then it takes a while for it to get all its leaves grown back. So probably late summer and all during winter they flower and produce fruit, hopefully. Some of them have fruit on them still, but uh, if you water all the time, they don't. So the clean, holistically grown cow manure is cow manure that is comes from cows that are only fed grass. Uh, they've shown that animal feeds uh, uh, contain high amounts of heavy metals. And they've shown that heavy metals in our soils 
can wind up in the food. And heavy metals in our, in our soils that wind up in our plants affect the health of the mitochondria. Also, another source of heavy metals is plastic. So if you're growing in plastic pots, or using plastic mulch, or using plastic shade cloth, or you're irrigating with plastic tubing for long periods of time, uh, chances are you have heavy metals in your system, uh, in your soil system, and that can affect the uh, energy output and the signaling response in your tree's uh, mitochondria. So its ability to signal uh, when it has is undergoing drought stress is compromised because of the heavy metals that uh, damage the mitochondria. So feeds organic animal manure, <clears throat> they don't require you to, in organic agriculture, you can use uh, manure from non-organic sources, as long as they're not feeding GMOs. But those non-organic sources use copper and uh, zinc and other heavy metals to prevent bacteria and fungi and um, uh, promote shelf life in animal feeds and so then they feed those feeds to the animals and your uh, animal at the uh, feedlot or the small farm consumes those feeds and then you use that manure on organic farms that is a huge source of heavy metals <clears throat> same with heavy metals in uh, micronutrients and potassium, anything mine, limine agents are all high in heavy metals. Uh, anything mined is probably going to have heavy, heavy metals in it. Uh, a lot of the uh, industrial fertilizers that is made from uh, human uh, waste, because uh, a lot of fertilizers are made from industrial waste and human waste are high in heavy metals. So those heavy metals when created to form fertilizers, whether it be organic or non-organic, are going to affect your tree's metabolic health because it damages the mitochondria. Here's the M4 mango. It's looking good. I'm working my way over the achachiro. I haven't tasted this fruit yet. I have picked a couple of them off, but I see there's little scratch marks on the tree. So when you, you spray mangoes to prevent like discolored fruit and stuff, you, you're consuming that copper that they spray. Copper is a known cause of dementia in uh, humans. And also iron, uh, they say, is a being found in people that have uh, cognitive decline in their brains. So iron, a source of iron is from animal proteins. Mm -hmm. A human soluble form of iron, in fact, is from animal proteins. That's why they tell you to eat uh, red meat if you're anemic. Most people are not anemic. You have to have a really poor diet to become anemic. But I guess a lot of people do have a poor diet. So the animal manures that they make compost out, they use in organic agriculture, they're finding is high in heavy metals. Uh, uh, it's really scary. Lead is one of those heavy metals. It's scary that you have to pay attention to everything, the whole system. So that's why we only feed our uh, cows grass. They only get grass hay when we lock them in at night. Sure, those organic or those farms might be using fertilizers to uh, fertilize their 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 fields of hay, but the, we buy the cheapest form of hay, and generally those fields aren't um, they don't use like grazon and stuff like that. I've never had a problem with herbicides in my hay here so far. Knock on wood. Um, so that's good. My air rides are starting to do very well. This uh, Monstera Deliciosa elbow is looking great. It's finally crawling up the tree. Survived the drought just fine. Let's 
so we don't give our cows any any grains whatsoever and we don't give them any uh mineral blocks mineral blocks and micronutrients mine micronutrients that you apply to your tropical fruit trees to optimize their health and chances are contain heavy metals so we follow the biodynamics farm standard and you're not allowed to use uh, mineral blocks when you farm biodynamically uh, and raise cows. They don't allow you to worm them. They don't allow you to give them shots. Definitely no antibiotics. So it's, uh, it's good that I uh, learned about biodynamic farming. I'm forever grateful for their inspiration uh, and their their uh, influence on me as far as how I was going to manage this farm. Um, it's been great. I uh, don't, re sorry, I'm trying to get through this mess of freaking vines here. Mess of vines. To get over this achachiro tree. There's quite a bit of fruit on this little tree. This well, it's kind of getting big, even though it's been topped twice, but I don't really see any gold fruit yet. I see lots of yellow fruit forming, but I don't see any gold fruit. I see lots of green fruit. But I don't see any... I say that the Achachiro fruit is sweeter. I see one maybe on the other side. I'm gonna to try to go over there and get it. It's sweeter when it's grown in shade, but this fruit is definitely all in shade. It's got this horrible vine growing over it. And the fruit is very nice this year. It's bigger than I thought it would be. Maybe that one's ready, huh? Looks kind of golden. I'm gonna pick it just for the hell of it. It's very big. Probably not, probably should have waited, but uh, that's okay. I can eat a little sour. <clears throat> I'll pick that and then go over to our uh... deer fly got my ear. Go over to the uh... Seashore mangosteen again. So that seems to be, it looks like there's a fruit that's turning red on it. I'm gonna go look at that. Uh, Julian Ryan said, he's, he's got a YouTube channel. It does, uh, grows a lot of different species in a, on a small scale, which is how most people grow tropical fruit trees uh, he tries to plant looks like he tries to plant everything small rather than leaving it in pots forever and ever and ever which severely impacts the tree's natural ability to uh, function at its optimal uh, genotype so um, but anyway he because uh, I just did the video on the seashore mangosteen and he's and I've done videos on the MB stating the MB fruit uh, doesn't turn sweet if uh, the fruit is grown where it's warmer because our fruit is sweet in the spring but I just had some fruit ripen that I haven't even bothered picking because it's gone completely sour and it ripened prematurely um, but I, I the first fruit of the seashore mangosteen which is known to have a sweet tart component fruit though I've seen mixed um, uh, taste test on that um, have, has our our fruit was mostly just sweet. It wasn't it wasn't sweet, but it wasn't tart either. It was like in between. It was like a I don't know. It was like an acid. It's hard to explain, but it wasn't tart like a lemon drop mangosteen at all. It's much better than a lemon drop mangosteen. It's a superior fruit to the lemon drop mangosteens. Uh, it's a superior fruit to the uh, Garcinia madruno. <clears throat> and uh, it's one of the relatives of Garcinia mangostana. But 
Uh, he's, 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 I don't know why I didn't think of this, but he said, I wonder if the fruit that ripens in the summer will be sour. Um, but I have little tiny fruit because garcinias have long periods of fruiting. So they, some continuously fruit, some like fruit multiple times a year, like the, uh, garcinia living stony eye, but can only set fruit when it's cooler. So it will not set fruit here when it's hot. It'll set fruit, but it'll drop it all when it's very tiny. Uh, but it'll keep trying and then it will set fruit. As soon as the weather cools just a little bit in the fall, then it re resets and it will hold a, a crop to maturity. So some place where it isn't quite as hot all the time, like uh, Madeira, Portugal, probably you could grow uh, Garcinia living stonii and fruit uh, gets sweet fruit year round because it doesn't ever get that hot there. But it also always stays like in a continu continuously spring uh, mode, at least as far as I can see. What they say and what actually happens could be different though. I was looking at my uh, little uh, seedlings in here and our uh, Alva star apples are looking great. This is a little cacao. Somebody text or emailed me recently and wanted to know if I had cacao seeds for sale. I only sell fresh fruit of the cacao because you have to get fresh fruit and you get those at Montoso Gardens in Port Port uh, Puerto Rico, Port Puerto Rico. Yes. And um, uh, I've always had good luck with their seeds. These actually came off of our tree right here last year and it fruits in the sun in the winter so it, it's not setting flowers yet because this tree got severely affected by the drought for the first time ever and it's just coming out of it i imagine it's going to start blooming in the winter and set fruit in the winter again like it did last year because we don't water so these cacao are, are seedlings from it so i've been known to give seedlings away when people come by here I cannot sell fruit uh, seeds, or I can sell seeds, but I cannot sell plants uh, because uh, we're not a nursery. We don't have a nursery license, nor are we ever going to have one. And I can't sell sky and wood, so don't even ask. I don't do it. And but when people come by here, I've been known to give them stuff. So, uh, but you have to ask. You have to ask for a tour. You can't just. Uh, treat it like it's all business because I don't have a business selling plants. So uh, I'm here to help people. That's what I like to do. That's why I don't really uh, do that much fruit sales. I do mail order fruit sales, but I don't really uh, go out of my way to make a lot of money doing it. So I was looking at my little garcinias that I have in here of uh, the really expensive garcinias that they sell on, is it Bellamy trees? The $50 uh, Garcinias, and there's one popping up right here. See that little stick? That's what that is. So they have ger started germinating. This is a little Alva uh, uh, star apple. Um, this is a little Alva star apple. This is a little Alva star apple. These are all cacao seedlings. <clears throat> So, so, yeah, if you ask if I sell plants, I'm just going to tell you no, unless I know you. And I'll, then I would probably say, yeah, you should come by. I'll give you one. Uh, but if you've never been by here and and here's a little petalite tree that was my friend, uh, a gift from my friend, uh, Dan, Sebastian. Uh, thank you, Dan. It looks great. Uh, he gave me a round leaf cacao. I should check on that because I planted it over here. <sighs> But yeah, if you just uh, email me and want to know if I sell plants, I'm just going to tell you no. <clears throat> but <laughs> I do what I just said I do. So if you got that, that's how you get a plant for me. Um, if I have it, uh, like the Alba, I, pr I probably don't have because I only have, uh, it looks like three trees out of 28 seeds that I got. But I had more, but it seemed like some something may have eaten some. So... Here's a little coffee tree. This was a uh, gift from my friend, Scott. I trade stuff. I like trading for plants. That's what I do. When I say I give stuff to people, they usually give stuff back in return. So I love little trees. These are little cacao seedlings I planted of Criollo cacao. So a little Criollo cacao. And here's that round leaf 
uh, coffee tree, or not coffee, but uh, cacao tree, and it looks like it's sending out new, it looks like bugs started attacking it. I planted it right next to a uh, Clementino Rubino. I'm not afraid to planting you people with small yards. This is kind of what you probably have to do, but this is what I do on a large scale. I plant trees adjacent to each other. Uh, they seem to do better, and uh, that's how that's how I plant them. And if you have a small space, probably that's what you're doing also. Um, here's a, a, a durian tree. Was trying to like not do well during the drought. They seem uh, like they they need more water than other plants, but it's uh, overcome it and it's doing well now. It's survived winter. I don't believe durian like uh, is is uh, is is able to handle the cold like I do. Garcinia mangostana, I believe, can handle uh, significant amounts of cold that it would get here in Tene. I don't find Garcinia mangostana to be an ultra tropical, but I do durian. There's a durian tree. Also, another tree I don't consider to be ultra tropical is the pool. Uh, Pulisan? Yeah. I have a Pulisan tree somewhere around here. I'm looking for it. Hopefully some creature did not get it. Oh, there it is right here. It looks great. It grew new leaves in the winter. So I, it's a seed grown tree. Uh, it's uh, doing good. It's, it's grown quite a bit. Uh, I have a... Uh, I'm looking for this... Uh, mangostana growing in this. I plant little seedlings in these like thickets of grass. Like I have found that trees outgrow, outgrow the competition. They don't get affected by grass, but they can get smothered by it. And um, since we don't apply uh, anything that is known to contain heavy metals, then they're able to function optimally uh, in this system. Compaction probably prevents a lot of people from ever being able to grow uh, at, at optimum health of a plant. Compaction is the root cause of all of our problems here, I believe. And it's taken years for our soils to not become compacted. And a lot of that was because I kept planting more and more stuff here and digging holes in it, like bananas. So I know that there's a little... A little... Uh, A little tiny mangostana here somewhere. Hopefully the rabbits did not get it. And uh -huh. where are you? But of course, when I need to look for it, I can't find it. And if I look too hard, chances are I'll step on it. So. I know it's in here, um, but where is it? Is anybody's guess? I know it's around here somewhere. I should have staked it, but I didn't. Um, but I know where others are, so I know that they do grow in here, and they're just fine. I have a little keppel tree. I don't believe keppel tree is ultra, ultra tropical. It seemed to grow new leaves during the winter. Seed grown tree does just fine. Uh, cacao, of course, does just fine. <clears throat> also, we plant our plants, our little tiny seedlings, uh, bare root. Uh, I, I throw any nursery soil I bought away and uh, any compost that I make uh, that I grow our seeds in, I put on top of the soil after I planted the tree bare root. I take our soil out, rinse the roots in rainwater, and then plant them bare root. Uh, that way they're able to adapt to the soil instantly. This is a, a meringue tree. It didn't seem too bothered by the cold, so... Uh, durian, yes, showed signs of cold stress. Uh, meringue, no. Um, petali, not really. Um, bread nut, 
breadfruit yes totally cold sensitive ultra tropical yes definitely these aeroids no not at all anthurium regale no problem whatsoever anthurium waraquianum no problem whatsoever <clears throat> There's the mangostana right here. Looks quite well. Quite well. Mm -hmm. This is our Nocleolata latifolia, the African peach. Somebody asked, what's the flavor like? It's like a giant strawberry, but strawberries from like the 60s and 70s and before, not the strawberries of today that are, are sour and woody. It's a shame what they've done to strawberries. And personally, I think that I did get some good organic strawberries, but they use organic, they use plastic in organic agriculture. Uh, it's an approved, it's an approved product, which makes zero sense because it's probably the worst product ever for organic soils. It instantly puts microplastics into the soil. It's good uptaken by the plants, which contain all kinds of polymers which are mitochondrial damaging and that's how it gets into our food if microplastics are able to pass the blood brain barrier they're and into our, get into our hearts and into our liver and into our kidneys through food they're definitely going into our plants via organic agriculture and i found that when i eat the strawberries i start grinding my teeth so i stopped eating the strawberries because i did find some good organic strawberries and I stopped grinding my teeth again. So, in my sleep. Here's this little, uh, people think I don't grow plinia, but this is a plinia inflata, it looks great. It's doing good. Survived the drought just fine, no problem. <clears throat> Cacao survived the drought just fine. So they've done lots of studies on abiotic stress, on metabolic health and ATP production, which is the production of energy from your mitochondria, and uh, studies on ROS, which is uh, reactive oxygen species in cells. So they create reactive oxygen species, which uh, are antioxidants. Uh, so they cause uh, cellular respiration and cellular death. But all the studies are done on annuals. So what applies to an annual, because they found that uh, abiotic stress can cause uh, negative effects in annuals, like lettuce and tomatoes and stuff like that. But they also found that they increase the phenolic compound uh, compounds in the plant when they go under stress, like drought stress or stuff. So that's what I've noticed um, when trees are able to grow naturally and grow, go under uh, stress and get affected by insects and are not given heavy metals and they're being able to grow naturally the way they're supposed to grow. Trees and annuals are two completely different things. So what affects an uh, annual negatively uh, probably does not affect a tree negatively because they're long living plants that have adapted to changes in the environment and to cold stress. And so uh, they're not gonna get the oxidative stress, the cellular stress. And if they do, they're able to regenerate and grow new leaves. And regeneration of cells is a good way to regenerate mitochondria. So. Uh, I believe it has a positive effect. I had trouble finding any studies on this. Has a positive effect on a plant's overall health. Uh, so it's that's why we do it, and it seems to work. And there's people uh, think that uh, a plant that they plant, a tree that they plant, cannot grow like all the other trees that are growing uh, in their yard naturally. So all these other trees that thrive that weren't planted by me, they think grow completely different than say the achachiro tree. Probably your achachiro tree that's been kept in a black plastic pot is uh, mitochondrial damage. So it has undergone mitochond uh, mitochondria mutations that prevent it from functioning naturally. Uh, so from the time the plant is uh, acquired as a seed, they sterilize the seed and then they start it in a sterile potty medium in a black plastic pot generally. 
Some people use the uh, cloth pots, which are uh, woven plastic, same difference. Uh, so the tree is going to be affected by all the chemicals, the forever chemicals, the fungicides, the uh, UV protectants, uh, all kinds of stuff from those, from those plastic containers that it's being grown in. And then they're watering with uh, city water or well water that probably contains some sort of pollutant, uh, which can affect the uh, mitochondria of the tree. And then they think they have to keep the tree in a pot for like two years before they put it outside. Uh, and they want to send down long tap roots, so it affects the architecture of the root. And, and when the architecture of the root is affected, then the uh, plant's ability to function optimally, metabolically, is severely limited. <clears throat> That's why you have to coddle your little plants along. Uh, why they think they have to water them. Probably uh, in humans, well, not probably, in humans, they've shown that uh, excess food uh, creates uh, too much ATP, too much gen uh, energy generation, which uh, you don't want. You want the energy production to slow down. So when people eat late at night, uh, they're producing energy in their sleep and it's disrupting their uh, circadian rhythm. So in plants, they're feeding these plants um, water-based fertilizers or salt, you know, water-soluble fertilizers in huge amounts that the plant, because they're salt, they just open up and they suck them up. And then they're giving them micronutrients uh, that contain heavy metals. Probably the fertilizers a lot of times contain heavy metals. And then uh, they add limine agents like gypsum and... Um, other stuff because their soil becomes too oxidated, uh, damaged, and uh, compacted from their management. So <laughs> everything I thought I learned, I, I realize now that I don't know squat uh, from the 80s and 90s, 2000s. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn what's going on. I, I feel my understanding has evolved quite a bit. And it's thanks to this property here. This property is, has instilled in me the ability to try to understand how plants are able to grow naturally. And I think I mostly have it down, but I'm still learning. I wish more studies would come out. This is a Lux Garcinia. This branch broke the top off from this oak tree falling on it. That's just part of nature. Can't let it upset you. Uh, but our goal of becoming Acha Chiro Farm is slowly becoming a reality, uh, much to my consternation. You know, I'm not really into being a fruit monger. I, I really enjoy uh, sharing uh, seeds and stuff with people and not really enjoy uh, marketing fruit. Thankfully, I'm in a position where I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but I give back to a lot of people and try to help as many people as I can. Some people just don't hear the message and uh, never get on board. But I see another fruit fell off. But it started changing. And so I'm going to taste this fruit today to see if it's sweet. So when I say that I, uh, Julian said that the, suggested that maybe the fruit, because he said the fruit that he tasted at Fruit and Spice Park of the seashore mangosteen was uh, very sour, 7 out of 10, which is, in my book, extremely sour, like the, almost the worst that you can get. But I have some little fruit that, see, this is big difference, uh, that aren't going to ripen for quite a while, so a couple months. So that fruit, by the that definition by that theory that the warm the fruit that develops in warm conditions because this started in late winter this fruit and um so most of it was developed when it was cool so this fruit was only developed pretty much when it was hot so that fruit should be by that theory of heat causes sourness like it does in mb this fruit should be sour when i try it so i'm gonna taste this fruit and see what it's like. Um, 
I'm so excited. I love uh, new fruits and I really love this, this fruit. I like it better than all of the uh, Garcinia gardnerianas. And if you leave it off the tree for a few days, uh, I left it off for five days. It starts turning pink. It should be red. It should be red. That's what I thought. But um, this fruit has some green to it, so it does start uh, ripening off the tree a little bit more. Most uh, Garcinias will not ripen off the tree. They'll just start turning brown inside. The white flesh will start turning brown. But I'm going to turn this phone around and try to do a taste test with all these mosquitoes around here. Good looking fruit. It smells good. It didn't smell as much like bananas being, because uh, this fruit was not off the tree yesterday when I checked last night or like at five o'clock. Um, so I know it fell off sometime early morning. Looks good. No, it's not tart. It's good. It's not clear like that other taste test I did. It's like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seeds in it. So. The cheapest seeds I saw, which they don't have anymore, and everyone's raised their price above $6, seems to be $8 a seed. So eight times seven, $56. And it comes in little wedges like the mangosteen. It's more tart. The freshly picked yellow fruit is more tart than the fruit that I let sit off the tree for uh, five days. So probably I should let the next, if the fruit falls off the tree, let it ripen. It's still not, it's got a sweet and a tart taste. So I'd give it a five out of 10. That's good. It's a good fruit. And not a lot of meat. More meat than a cacao, but I think well, I said five or six. It's not. The first flavor I taste is sweet, and then when I bite into it, it's tart. So, it's not saving all these seeds. It's a good fruit. I like it. Seeds are pretty big. Okay, I have this achachira that I picked a little bit under right, but uh, it's a little bit bigger. I should probably compare it to the other fruit that's starting to ripen just so you can get a size comparison. I believe this fruit on this uh, Garcinia uh, Celebica uh, should be bigger than this, but it's a uh, comparable, but the uh, Silabica is definitely bigger. Achachiro has been much better fruit than the uh, Celebica, the Humbromiana, the seashore mangosteen, but the Achachiro, Garcinia humilis. Sorry, do I have stuff all over my face? Eh. Okay. has been very good. This is a good fruit. It's delicious. Uh, I love it. It's sweet. 
It's not tart, it's very meaty. Much more meat than the uh, seashore mangosteen. Uh, seashore mangosteen is a lot more uh, rewarding than any lemon drop mangosteen, I know that. I do like our flavor of our own hybrid lemon drop mangosteen. It's a, a Frog Valley Farm sweet, Eric's sweet lemon drop. Uh, better than the other lemon drop mangosteens and better than the madruno, but uh, it's probably on par. This is definitely much better than all of them. Mm. That was sweet. That's good. Got a little bit of tartness. Should have been a little more ripe, but after eating all these mangoes, I'm okay with a little bit of tart. It's about the same tartness as the first seashore mangosteen I had that I let ripen off the tree. So if you let them ripen off the tree, they do get sweeter. And I got two seeds out of that. The other one had, what, seven? Uh, big seeds. I wanted to see if there's any of these little tiny Brazilianses on here right so I can do a taste test. Uh, very tart. More tart than the... More tart than the... Uh, Humbromiana. My hybrid sweet lemon drop, it only produces one crop a year, which is very atypical of... Uh, there's an achachiro. I just want to look at this Garcinia madruno because sometimes I do see a random ripe fruit on it, and I do. I see a little tiny fruit. Seems like the first fruit of the year are always huge, and then as the year progresses, after it's produced a lot of fruit, it can produce uh, random small fruits. But they usually have seeds in them, and this is very tart. No matter how yellow it gets, it's still going to be tart, tart and dry. Usually, I mean, this is a very, uh, this is not a good representative of the size of the madruno fruit. They're usually uh, uh, almost as big as the achachiro, sometimes as big, but it's got fruit in there. So I can do a, a little uh, taste test of it. That's so tart, but I got a seed. Very tart. This tree has flowers on it. Oh, where'd that seed go? It has flowers on it. It has fruit on it. Got little fruit on it. Got flowers on it. It's got bigger fruit on it. That are bigger than that fruit I just tasted. And it's got little tiny fruit on it that are just flowers that just produce. So and this Garcinia madruna produces fruit nonstop all year. It's a good tree. The Garcinias have been shown to have lots of bioactive compounds that are uh, very good for our health. In fact, there are anti-carcinogenic uh, compounds in it. Uh, anti-tumor compounds in it, um, uh, uh, phenolic compounds that have been shown to uh, cause uh, uh, fullness and affect your metabolism. So I always, I make my fruit leaf teas. I make fruit leaf tea out of all my trees here. Well, almost all, I don't do the Aki, but all my Garcinias, I take a fruit leaf. I mix about 40 different species together and make fruit leaf tea. And then I structure the tea water. So I, I ionize the water in a, in a water structuring device. And I drink that every morning and I mix uh, lots of Ayurvedic powders in it, whole food Ayurvedic powders. So turmeric and moringa, onion and garlic and ashwagandha and uh, aronia berry and red raspberry seed and flax and cinnamon and brahmi and uh, uh, cardamom and 
some other stuff, but you get it. A lot of different powders and I mix it in my tea water. I'm not a uh, doctor and I'm not a functional medicine doctor. I'm just a farmer and I'm trying to optimize my health and I'm a biohacker for the farm and a biohacker for my own personal health. So I'm on the journey to try to figure out exactly what is optimal health and how to attain it. And uh, everything is connected. So the optimal health for my farm uh, is the natural whole foods approach. So just clean, unprocessed uh, inputs, probiotic and prebiotic, this cow manure with the uh, grass hay, uh, fresh, uh, holistically grown cow manure, zebu manure, and small amounts, not huge amounts. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, cow manure is high in nitrogen. It's the same nitrogen level as compost. So there's no, uh, when uh, people say you need to compost before because the nitrogen will burn, it's, compost has the same nitrogen levels as cow manure. So I've never found that cow manure, our cow manure has ever burnt any plants. So anyway, I'm Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Uh, please leave a comment, um, nice comment. I like hearing from people and I hope everyone uh, strives to help Florida and help their own ecosystem and in turn help your own health. Have an excellent day. Thanks for watching.